All right, in this video, I'm going to be talking you guys through some Spider-Man pages that I'll be coloring my favorite superhero. So check it out. All right, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is K. Michael Russell. I am a comic book colorist and art instructor at 01artschool.com, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, so the video today is uh, there's we got three pages we're going to do. Um, and this was a, uh, it was funny how this, this little short came about. So uh, a couple months ago, you guys probably remember that uh, I, I colored this on the channel. I think I put a time lapse up. And um, it was uh, just a guy that posted some art on the comic books subreddit. And uh, I'm not super active there, but but I was, I was looking at it. It was like, man, this is really this is a cool looking piece. I want to color this. So I asked him about it. And he said, cool, and, and I did a video on it. And uh, it really got a lot of attention there. Like, they really seemed to enjoy it quite a bit. And said, man, you guys need to, you know, you guys need to be working on Spider-Man, even though it was just, you know, for fun. So I, I I didn't think it would he would go for it, but I said, you know what, let's let's make a little short Spider-Man comic just for fun, some some fan art. So uh, the first script that I've ever written, but we put together this incredibly original Spider-Man story of... Uh, him saving a, a, a burglar, and we've got some, or saving a lady from a burglar, and some good old uh, Fantastic Four fan service <laughs> at the end of it. And uh, but he did an amazing job, and uh, he penciled it, inked it. His name's John Grossgene, and I'll, I'll link his stuff in the description. And uh, so what I'll, I'll do is I'm just going to kind of talk you guys through uh, my process here, and I might time lapse through some of this uh, just for the sake of time, but we'll kind of see how it goes. Oh yeah, also, before before I get started, before I forget, right below my face, right in, this is hard, right there, down below there, there is my new uh, Be a Better Colorist guide. It's uh, my top 10 pro tips, a little PDF uh, as a way of saying thank you to you guys for supporting me. And uh, so yeah, if you go to comiccolor.com slash guide, you can download that for free. And you'll also be the first to know about the new course I'm working on, which I'm very excited about. Uh, it's probably the most requested stuff, uh, which is rendering specifically, like light and shadow and how it works when you're coloring comics. And this would apply to digital art, painting, whatever. But I really wanted, to, I'm creating a, a the most detailed guy that I have ever seen on, 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 on this subject. So be sure to check that out if you want to be the first to know about this. But uh, let's uh, let's get going on this thing. So all right, uh, I'm going to tell you guys what I've done so far, because obviously I've got some work done, but all, all the boring, dry stuff you guys probably don't care to see anyway. So on all of these pages, um, I have basically just set my base colors. What that means is just the, the colors that are going to be the base colors that all the rendering is going to be on top of. And I there's, there's not really um, a trick to this part, I don't think. It's just a kind of a feel thing that comes with time. Uh, but I will say this, I, I try to avoid uh, super dark colors, and I try to avoid super bright colors. Uh, for, as far as generally, of course, there's parts that are bright and parts that are darker. But uh, but generally speaking, you know, if I start color picking, you know, like the red on Spider-Man's suit, and you can look at the color picker over here and see, um, you know, the, the quote-unquote, you know, dark parts of this image, like, for example, this bag, it's still just not that dark. It's about halfway down the color picker, and... Uh, so anyway, um, all I've done so far is set up my base colors, and I am thinking of you know having more saturated colors in the foreground, and you know the background is going to be a little bit you know less saturated and and, and less contrast because we don't want to draw attention to the background. And the only other thing that I've done is like for example in these first two panels, you know we've got this uh, uh, hot dog sales guy here, hot dog cart man. And I don't really want you to focus on him. I mean, he's there, but I kind of want you to look past him because he's not the focus of of these panels. And so all I did was I put a uh, a normal layer, and if you look at it by itself, it's just kind of got this bluish, uh, you know, really saturated blue color. It's about 60% opacity. And when you when you put that on top, it just sort of darkens it all a little bit, adds that kind of blue tint to it, and your eye at first glance we'll sort of ignore it you know I mean because it's it kind of kind of blends into the side and you know the actions happening here uh, on the left and here with with spider-man and I did the same thing on uh, this panel 
where, you know, again, I want you to look past the lady that just got the hot dog. So, of course, Spider-Man being very saturated red and blue helps, but uh, just darkening up some of those colors. And again, it's normal mode. That one's like 50%. Uh, and then on the third page, it's pretty straight. There's there's really nothing done there except base colors. And But I am thinking, you know, about, you know, desaturated uh, base colors, and there's not a lot of contrast in the background again. So that's all uh, kind of what goes into the thought process for that. And so the next thing I'm going to do is uh, set up some color holds, which will, um, what that means is I'm going to change the color of the lines. And this is something you can do to create atmosphere and depth and all these sort of things. So it's not a particularly exciting process. I will probably speed through this part, but we'll go ahead and get started. I want to jump in here and explain uh, what I'm doing here. So uh, I, I don't want to do like a huge, like complex selection for the whole page all at one time because, you know, if, I mean, not that it happens very often, but if Photoshop were to crash or there was some issue and I end up losing my selection, I would, you know, wouldn't be that happy. So all I'm doing is on top of the lines, I'm just I'm just got a, a you know a regular old layer here and just filling it with a color. It doesn't even really matter what it is, but uh, I can easily go back and control click this layer and make and grab that selection. So uh, it's an easy way to kind of keep your selection uh, saved often and not have to worry about losing all of the work that you've done here. So uh, and it also is a cool way to kind of see what areas you've missed. So. I had someone recently say, hey, color holds take a long time, like they're really boring. How, you know, is it worth doing it? And yeah, and there's not really a shortcut for this. So it's just one of those things you sort of have to, uh, you have to get done. And I like to uh, time lapse through this stuff typically because all I'm doing is making selections and filling it, and that's pretty much it. So. We're going back to the time lapse now. So I want to show you guys a quick trick that I learned recently that involves clipping mask. I don't really use clipping mask a lot, but uh, I have my inks on a on a layer all by themselves, and they're separated from the white on the page. So this this layer that's marked holds is just the black lines, and I'll uh, I'll put a link in the description to how I do that, a tutorial that's very similar to how I have mine set up. And uh, so I'm going to make a new layer on top, and we'll just call this uh, holds edit. So if I don't want to change, like, uh, I want to have more flexibility in, in the colors that I'm using on these holds. So, But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down Alt, and as you see, as I hold down Alt and I move the cursor in between these two layers, you see how it changes to this weird little square? As long as you hold down Alt, you'll see this. So I'm going to hold down Alt, or it's Option on a Mac. Um, Again, I'm trying to be inclusive for you Mac people. And uh, so I'm going to click there, all right? And you'll see this little arrow. And what this means is um, everything that I do on this layer is going to be contained to the contents of the layer below it. So to show you guys what I mean, if I go into a different color here, and it doesn't really matter which brush, then this should uh, be contained to just the, the lines itself, right? Now, if I do this and then undo the clipping mask, you'll see what it actually looks like. But if I turn the clipping mask back on, 
then you can see that it's it's doing that just for the uh, for the lines. So I'm going to use my selection that I made earlier in conjunction with the clipping mask, and I'm just going to choose like a bright sky color. Let's see, just a normal mode, big soft brush, nothing fancy. And it's too strong of an effect. I want to bring this down. I want it to be lighter, but not like super light. So yeah, something like that. So you see how I've got a little bit of atmosphere now behind these people on these buildings here. And uh, I'm going to do the same thing in the second panel with the same color. And I'll drag this a little bit more over and on the right side of the panel too. I want to do that on panel one also. And the easy thing about this, if I want to go back and change the the color of this later, I can just open up a you know like a hue saturation and and you know mess around with that color, make it darker or more saturated or less saturated or whatever. I'm actually going to turn the saturation down a little bit. So it kind of gives you that feeling that there's some there's stuff in the air, you know what I mean? There's air in the air. But I like to work on backgrounds first. It's just one of those things that I like to get the the less exciting stuff out of the way. <laughs> and uh, a lot of these brushes that I'm using in Photoshop are from uh, Kyle T. Webster, which is it's a uh, they're a part of Photoshop CC. If you have that. Or if you were around before, uh, you used to be able to get the brushes separately, but it's been a year or two since that was an option. And I'm, uh, I'm just, you know, nothing fancy here. I'm just using a, a bright blue and I want this to be, I don't, I don't see a lot of, um, I don't see a lot of like brushy Spider-Man. I don't know. You know, I don't see that. Jordy, Jordy Belair has definitely worked like that before. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of liking the idea of, of having like a brushy Spider-Man, uh, little story here. We'll see what comes out of this. I'm just using a hard light brush to put in some kind of soften that brush work there a little bit. And for right now all of this is kind of on one layer. Um, for the for the background it just I like to keep it simple. I'm just going to kind of select all of these buildings, at least the ones that are in the in the front. And big soft blue brush. I don't know if I like that color. Yeah, a little bit warmer. Went with some. Ah, uh, that's not. It's too yellow. Let's keep going. It's a little too saturated. Can't find the color I want to use. <laughs> there we go. I just wanted a little bit more warmth than I was getting there. I'll go in and, and add some details later when I start rendering this and uh, I'll probably be using Procreate for that part. I just like the way the brush engine works better there, but you can use whatever whatever works for you. And there'll be a lot of push and pull as I use as I go through this, I'm sure. But for all this stuff, you know, I'm I'm trying to keep it uh, as simple as possible. For these parts because again it's like I, I don't want a ton of contrast I don't want you like noticing the background first like that would defeat the purpose of what we're trying to do here but the windows are glass they're very reflective so I'm pretty much just putting the sky into the windows or a lighter version of them anyway just kind of a bright bluish color. 
and like this blue kind of sticks out too much to me in this particular page so I'm just gonna kind of blend this a little bit more with the background it's like super subtle but Oh, it looks like I accidentally grabbed uh, whatever building this is. <laughs> Empire State Building, right? I think so. Alright, so I think the background is pretty much where I want it to be for now. Like I said, I probably I might go back and add some more details and things a little bit later. Uh, I just want to kind of get the broad, broad strokes in there for now. Um, and uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is uh, we're going to start working on uh, shadows. I'm going to make a new layer, and this is just on top of my color layer and, and all the layers I'm working on so far. And we'll rename this for. So you guys can follow along. We'll just call this shadows. Now, how do you choose your shadow color, right? So, of course, there's not like a, this is the only way to do this answer here. Um, but uh, what I'm thinking of, or at least my kind of thought process on a page like this is, you know, what color is going to make it into the shadows, you know, overall. And... So, you know, the sky is, we're basically looking at sunlight, very, very uh, white light, you know, I mean, a little bit of warmth in it, you know, a little bit of some yellowish, you know, tones in it. Uh, so it's a very warm light source. And if uh, a light source is hitting something and there's a shadow that's either being cast or it's just like the other side of, of some object is in shadow, well, it's not going. It's not going to be completely black. It's it's going to have. There's going to be light there. Well, what color is that light? And that's what I'm thinking of. And the color of that light is pretty much the color of the sky, because the sky acts as one big light source. It's not as strong as the sun, but in all the shadows, you're you're going to a lot of times outdoors. You're going to get a, like a kind of a blue tinge shadow. Um, and uh, so what I what I like to do for this is sometimes I'll just pick a color. That I think might work, and I'm keeping this pretty desaturated. We can always change this later, but um, so this kind of you know bluish with the little not really like blue blue, but like kind of baby bluish sky color blue, and we can just test this. I'm going to put this uh, mo the layer mode to multiply, but I'm keeping this color very bright. Okay, it's it's not a dark color. If you start mixing dark colors with multiply. It gets really dark really quick, but if I but I go with a lighter blue, you know it's a little bit softer. I've got to like work at it, you know, to make it uh, get really dark. So I'll just kind of test an area and see like is this kind of do I like this, you know? And it's uh, we can just kind of scribble around here and 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 think about how these shadows are going to look against all this other stuff. And this is just how I work. Sometimes is I'll just kind of play around like, do I like this? And, you know, we can throw this all around everywhere. But I think that's pretty close to kind of what I would want. But let's say I, let's say I didn't like that color. And let's open up Hue Saturation. I could saturate that. Make it like really, really blue. I kind of like the really, really blue. We can brighten it a little bit. Maybe tone it down so it's not quite as dark. Yeah, I like that. So it's like whatever that is. All right, so what I'll do is if you hold down Alter Option and click the eyeball next to your layer window, it will hide everything except for that layer. So you hold Alter Option, click the eyeball, and now I can color pick that color. All right, that's that's my shadow color. Now, um, 
what I'm going to do, let's clear this layer. So let's just get rid of all this. And one a trick, now you can save this as like a swatch. I don't really do that very often anymore, but you can save it as a swatch just by clicking on any of this open area and you can name it or whatever. But I don't really work with swatches that much, but if you want to save it, you can save it. Um, or what you can do is uh, if you like a particular color, you know you're going to be using it on multiple pages, is I'll just make a little spot of that color on the page. And, and you know, I'll just, I know that's my shadow color for now. And I can color pick that. I can put it on other, I can, we can go ahead and do that on some of the other pages. So I'll go ahead and make a, a layer over here and put a little bit of mark. And so this is kind of the lazy man's way of grabbing swatches. And especially if I'm in Procreate and I don't want to have to go back and try to figure out what color I was using, then I can color pick that in Procreate and figure out what color it is. And if I put it in normal mode, I don't think it really changes over the white. So you shouldn't have to change the color mode to make that work. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to jump into Procreate for the shadow rendering, and then we'll keep on rolling. All right, so I am now in Procreate, and uh, we're going to pick up right where we left off, basically. So I have uh, I still have my shadows layer; it's still set to multiply. I've I can again I can color pick my little blue area to get that uh, 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 shadow color that, that I liked. And I'm going to use the flat marker brush. Uh, this is a default pro uh, Procreate brush. And uh, the only thing that I change is the layer mode, because I think by default it's in multiply mode, which I don't want for the brush. It's okay for the layer, but you don't want to, I don't want both. So, um, so the brush has been changed to normal mode. And there's two other things you're going to see me use here, and I've talked about this on the channel before. I have, let me turn all this off for a second, show you guys what I mean here. So I have these two layers down here at the bottom that are basically the contents of the background, except for the uh, <laughs> the, the suitcase apparently, it looks like just a mistake. And then there's also all of the foreground. Okay, and the reason that I've set it up this way is in Procreate, if you hold down two fingers on the, uh, the layer window, uh, on a layer, it will select the contents of that layer. Okay, so by doing that, let me turn all this back on, I can really quickly, uh, and that clipping mask didn't work by the way, I had to do some finagling to get that to show up the way I had it before. Um, but now I've got the, all the foreground characters selected very easily. And I don't have to go into my flats a hundred times to change everything. So yeah, but actually before I, I don't even want to start with the foreground. I'm going to start with the background again. And probably time lapse through some of this because I'm just going to be throwing some shadows around basically. And see how it goes. Hello, so I am the editor now of this video. And... I've just realized that none of the Photoshop work that I did since the last thing you saw recorded. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys the uh, Procreate time lapse. And I'm actually going to split it into two uh, parts. So you'll see first basically this, just the first two panels because uh, the iPad actually exports 4K video, so I can size it up quite a bit without losing any quality. It actually looks great. So you'll see it once go through as basically the first two panels, and I sort of tried to cut out the parts where I wasn't working on those, and then you'll see uh, the same thing again, uh, another time lapse with these two panels. And so yeah, let's just go ahead and play that with some music or something, and then I will come back and we'll go through layer by layer and I'll explain uh, what happened here. So check it out. All right, so instead of doing music, I decided to just talk you guys through this part too. So uh, it, it's uh, fairly straightforward technically what's, what's going to happen here. I'm uh, laying in those shadows on that shadow layer, like I said, in multiply mode using that uh, that baby bluish color that we use that I used earlier and I just throw in the shadows first and then uh, you'll see that the color of the shadows change on the skin they're gonna get a little bit more purple and I'm gonna explain this a little bit later 
when I get into the file. We'll go into some more detail. But I warmed up the shadows on the skin. I just thought it made it look a little too dead there. And, and I also ended up, um, all the lights are in linear dodge mode on a separate layer. I'll talk about that at the end of this time lapse also. And, uh, and you'll see that the, the, the hot dog vendor's hand is currently not uh, in shadow, but I'm going to go back and change that. Uh, I, I thought, you know, maybe his hand sticking out from under the, the umbrella, but it just didn't come out. Uh, it just seemed a little distracting. And uh, it's, it's not really the focus of the, the scene anyway. But um, So yeah, I've gone in the shadows uh, layer and worked on that. I've added some uh, highlights in linear dodge mode. And then shortly you'll see some of the reflected light starting to come in, like on the guy's arm. Uh, on the far left, you get a little bit of light blue. And um, I think that's just in normal mode. I'm just putting in that light blue color again because the sky is blue and a lot of this stuff is... Um, you know, is reflected from that. So all the most of the reflected light is that sort of bluish color. And just still going in and adding a few more highlights here and there. Uh, Spider-Man's suit, I wanted to really, uh, you know, look very out of this world and uh, a little bit more uh, reflective than everything else and, and sort of, uh, you know, stand out a little bit more, especially in that second panel since it's so small. So he's got a good bit of contrast on him there. And this is uh, the last two panels on the page. I'm starting the same thing. You guys are basically going to see the same thing in the same order. So shadows first in the background. I end up toning that down a little bit in the panel on the left uh, and just adding a little bit of light at the top. And uh, all the shadows again on him. Again, they're that same blue color. And uh, and you'll you'll notice on the guy running away with the purse. You'll again you'll notice this the, that just there it just changed that kind of more purpley color. I'm going to explain that again uh, once we get into the actual uh, uh, layered file in Photoshop. I'm going to walk you guys through all of that. And uh, then lights and more highlights again on the on the shiny parts of his costume. I'm going a little bit brighter. There's more specular highlights. Uh, not so much on the blue part. You know, his the blue part of his costume tends to be a little bit less reflective most of the time in the way that I've seen it done. So I, there's not as many of those really bright highlights or specular highlights uh, showing up in the blue. And uh, now just uh, throwing in a few more uh, details here and there. Uh, I added some of that blue reflected light you can see in the shadows, especially on the guy's skin on the right. And then adding a few more details to him to make him look a little bit sweaty so uh, this is pretty close to wrapping up so we are going to jump back into the non-time lapse part all right so hopefully you enjoyed the time lapse wasn't exactly what i was hoping to make when i made this video but i will we'll try again on the next page we'll do it, do it again so yeah this is sort of a draw the rest of the owl type tutorial so i don't want to do that to you guys i'm going to turn off everything basically that i've done since we left the voiceover recording and it's something like this i believe so i'm going to just walk you guys layer through layer what happened because the, the good thing about working the way that i'm working now is that you can actually kind of rewind the file because basically i'm i'm working on one layer at a time and so you can sort of see how it came together and uh, this uh, PDF, uh, excuse me, this PSD file is also on uh, my Patreon now at this point. So if you want to actually go download this file and play with all these layers yourself, you can do that. All right. So first off are the shadows, and I don't remember if you guys saw some of these happen, but but basically this is uh, all on a multiply layer, 100% opacity, and if you alt or uh, was it alt or option? Yeah, alt or option on a Mac. And, and click that layer, then you're seeing the actual colors that I use. And, and what you'll notice here is that on all of the skin tones, I'm using this uh, kind of purpley color. And then everywhere else, I'm, I'm using just the, the blue that I originally started with. And the reason for that was, uh, I'll actually show you guys. So if I just grab his skin and then just change the hue saturation of this sort of back where it was it was about like that roughly so it was sort of gray you know it came out a little grayer than I wanted because we're mixing a warm color you know these skin tones with uh, you know a little bit of blue 
and you end up with with kind of a you know a blue and warm mixing tends to gray things out a little bit. So all I did was I went in, selected all of the the, the skin tones on that layer, and just shifted it more toward purple. Okay. So if you look at it by itself, again you can see on the if I bring up the color wheel here, uh, you can see that it's it's jumping from that kind of baby blue sky blue to like a kind of a lavender color. Um, and, and again, in multiply mode, I found that, you know, you actually want to work with brighter colors. You don't want to really work with dark colors because they get too dark too quickly. Uh, so that's what I did just on the skin tones. And I, I think that it works a little bit better that way. You know, um, that's not a, a rule you necessarily have to follow, but uh, necessarily have to follow. But uh, I think it works well in this case. So I did it. And the other thing to keep in mind working in this method is you don't spend a lot of time picking colors. Uh, you know, in a production environment like comics, you've, uh, you, you sort of have to keep things moving. And what I've found is that is a good way to speed up is actually work on separate layers like this. And that way you can go back and adjust things after the fact. All right, so the next layer we move to is what I just labeled as direct light uh, layer, which is basically just all of the, the sunlight for the most part. And all of this... Uh, most of this is just one color. It's just this kind of saturated orange. If I color pick, you guys can see that. And again, I'm just holding down Alt or Option, clicking the, visib the visibility toggle, and uh, that will uh, turn everything but that layer off and on. So, But uh, you can see the places where I used more of it, you know, so there's, uh, there's uh, layered it more and you get brighter colors. Um, this layer is actually in linear dodge mode, is what it's called. Uh, Procreate calls it add mode. Uh, I don't, I don't know what the difference in those two terms are, but, but that, that's what I used. And, and, and I used, uh, it's at 100% opacity, but the kicker here is, at least for me, is using a very, very low opacity brush. So you can sort of build this up you know as it happens and let's see what else do we have so i did that uh, kind of all over and uh, even on spider-man you know where you're getting this kind of you know that's pretty much the base color that like reddish red uh, if i go up to the color pair here uh, you've got the red reds you've got this moving toward orange you've got highlights moving further toward yellow and all of this was done on, it's all one color. If I go look at that layer, you can see, you know, where I focused that color. And so again, uh, linear dodge is a pretty cool mode that I've just discovered in the last couple of months. And the thing to keep in mind, again, is keep the opacity of the brush low. Because if you don't, let me just show you guys here real quick. So you can see if, if, I, uh, if I get like a... Uh, pretty bright saturated orange, which is pretty close to what I was using before, and, and this is at 100% opacity, then, you know, linear dodge just kind of really blows things out and makes things very, uh, it's just very bright, um, and sort of like color dodge acts in a little way. But if I lower the opacity down to like, say, 20% or something, I can sort of and along with the pressure sensitivity on the tablet, I can control how much of this comes through, you know. And uh, but you you end up with a nice little color gradient going from red to yellow using a warm color like that. And then in the the cool parts of the image, uh, I just used um, a I think I used a, a light blue color. So yeah, like on Spider Man, you can barely see this, but just isolating that layer, I used kind of a really saturated baby blue because when you mix the a warm color like that with the blue, you end up getting this kind of strange gray look to it that I didn't really didn't really care for. Uh, I think that's about the only place that I did that. A little bit on this guy's, uh, yeah, a little bit on that guy's pants, but other than that, I pretty much stay with that same uh, orange color. All right, so the next layer is uh, a bounce light layer. And I'll pull this up here and then kind of toggle this off and on so you guys can see. Uh, it's very subtle. You can zoom up on this guy and see it here. But you see how in those shadows I'm kind of throwing around a little bit of that sky color. So all the places that are not getting direct sunlight are still getting light. They're just not getting sunlight. They're getting sunlight that's been bounced around 
and they're getting light from the sky, which is a huge blue light source. So that's why you'll see, um, you know, in places uh, like in the, like just a little bit on this guy's, you know, face, and it, it just makes a cool effect that brings a lot of realism and, and, and depth, and uh, you know, I like it. So I uh, did that on Spider-Man too, but but you know that blue on the red sort of grays it out a little bit. So it's very subtle. You can kind of see a little bit on his face and on his arm. But uh, but yeah, it's, it comes out kind of gray when you mix those. But in this case, that's kind of what I wanted. All right, uh, there's just a paint over layer, which is really nothing exciting. I think I was just kind of making some... Uh, yeah, you can see on the big guy up front here and a little bit on the faces, but just some redness, you know, in the areas where there's a little bit more... Uh, blood flow, you know, noses and elbows and things like that. Um, and even some on this guy's face that's in shadow, uh, just to kind of warm it up. I thought it was a little bit too bluish. So, But uh, this was just a layer in normal mode, just painting some colors that I actually wanted to see. That one's pretty simple. Uh, the texture on top of everything, which I probably should have left that on the whole time because I'm working on that texture the whole time. And uh, and then the, the last couple layers here... Uh, just an overlay layer, uh, which has kind of a medium, kind of a medium blue color, and I just I kind of wanted to warm uh, to cool down some of the uh, some of the warmer parts of the image, make it a little bit more uh, cohesive, so you guys can kind of see, especially in the bottom uh, in panel four, how it kind of you know uh, blued the the road and the sidewalk a little bit. I just like the way that it looked. And then I did some reflections in the windows on a layer by itself, and that's pretty much it. Everything else, oh, there was one other layer, or two or more layers here at the top that I added on top of the lines, which is just to add a little bit of atmosphere uh, behind these characters and, this, and, and behind the guy here in the bottom panel. And that's just, you know, behind the foreground so that it gives a little bit of depth there. And then I, I pushed it even further if you look at these two buildings here and here, went a little bit more, uh, a little bit more blue over those because I wanted to push those even further back because there's a lot more atmosphere, you know, between what we're looking at in this building versus what we're looking at in the uh, uh, Empire State Building back there. But uh, but the rendering, the stuff you guys are seeing here, this is what I'm going to be covering uh, in the course that I'm I'm kind of working on right now. I'm in the process of outlining it and everything. So uh, if you are interested, like I said earlier, in getting notified when that comes out, uh, you can sign up at the address below my face. And you'll also get that free tips guide just for signing up. So if you guys have questions, well, please use the comments. The comments have been quiet lately. So, you know, let me know what's going on. Um, and uh, be sure to check the links in the description. I'm going to link more resources and stuff down there for you guys also. So... I think that's it for this video. Sorry this one didn't go the way that I anticipated, but I hope you guys enjoyed it anyway. Uh, you can gripe in the comments, and I'll uh, see you in the next one. Take care.